Hello everyone, Arlisha here, and welcome to another video. It's currently 2.03 p.m. on Friday, June 7th, 2024. I'm telling you that because I've been spending the entirety of this day trying to film this section of this video. And I've just been moving my camera around changing the lights, changing everything. And I've just been going on this rant in my head that I'm so tired of feeling like I need to be perceived from the perfect angle. That's so exhausting, just because you will all see me through a screen. And like, oh my God, I'm a whole person with like angles that look good and some of them look different and some of them I don't like as much, but I'm like, tired of caring about it i'm so tired of caring about it so instead of using the tripod or my nice lights or my nice things i just have my camera stacked on top of a thing on top of another thing on top of another thing facing a window So I have been really fascinated by clothes on fashion for a long time. Clothes on fashion. That's not what I meant to say. <laughs> I've been so fascinated by art on clothing. Art and fashion. Uh, art, uh, fashion as a facet of art. Um, I really like fashion. Maybe if we continue to, to hone in on it, it's something that I've always, uh, I never really let myself be interested in, but I've always really liked it. Um, and now that I'm just enjoying that facet of myself, I have really been wanting to make art to put on clothing. So starting with some t-shirts, I am kind of taking what my brain to perceive, perceives to be the most direct path to putting art on clothes, making um, clothes of my art, how I make art currently. And that's to print it out and uh, affix it <laughs> to the clothing uh, very directly. Um, uh, so what I'm doing here today is just that. I've made some art digitally, snakes and bunnies. That's what I keep calling it. Um, and I really like it. I don't, my hand is very articulating today and I'm very aware of it also. Anyway, I have, I did snakes and bunnies. I made the art. I measured the shirt, found the dimensions of the shirt, and then I um, formatted it and I had to crop it to be able to print it on my uh, printer. So not on my not to be printed from my Cricut cutting machine, which we'll talk about later. Should have done that, kind of, but already you can see it's quite a process to get here. So it's relatively straightforward as far as the steps, if I had them laid out in front of me. But because I'm trying to find the path for myself, because I'm trying to figure out the process for myself, it's much clunkier. Um, there's no blazed trail I'm I am the trailblazer as it were I, I don't know I, I probably could have looked up people doing this actually oh, unnecessary trailblazing that's the story of my life yeah I'm just like walking through the tall brush um like going I gotta figure this out I'm gonna figure it. meanwhile there's like a well-worn trail uh just just uh just over there but you know, anyway, I guess that's every, is that everyone? Isn't that, that's the question that we all ask. Huh. Anyway, the first shirt ended up, because it was kind of clunky, the process wasn't like perfected. Um, so it printed out on nine pages, which is a lot, especially at this last end point, because... The last one, the very last piece I put on was like a tiny corner in an otherwise blank page. I think I had the, the shoulder piece also printed on that page. So less of a waste, but still, I don't know. Um, I like the shirt. This um, material that you're seeing for the first shirt 
is for dark fabrics, which means that the vinyl itself is thicker. So the design prints more opaquely. I feel like it's getting darker while I'm sitting here. Let me, um, hold up. Uh. Second shirt I printed on the material made for I'm really distracted by the lighting. I'm not I'm not gonna worry about it. I wanna be perceived as a real person existing in real time and real time changes. Anyway, I'm just gonna sit here. It's okay, it's fine. Anyway, the second design is on the other type of adhesive, which is a thinner vinyl. I don't know if there's actually any, I don't know if there's an actual adhesive here or if it's just vinyl that can be melted. I, I don't know. It's not sticky to the touch. Um, it's fascinating though. I really hope that you guys like this video and that it gets views and likes and comments so that I can feel really um, excited and enabled and supported to do more of these because... This design in particular, I loved putting together. I really, really love this one. Um, the material is so satisfying to handle. I wish I had water right now. I found a little bit. My water bottle my, is almost empty. Okay, I found some water. Where's focus? Somewhere like here, did we say? Anyway. Yeah, this material was a joy to work with, and I love this design. I really like the colors. I like how it turned out. This shirt is like a unisex, like boxy oversized t-shirt in the size extra large. And this design I put on the back of the shirt. This was the only one that I actually showed you the front of the shirt before starting. Um... I didn't plan and there were moments when I was ready to start ironing but I wasn't ready to set up filming so um uh, ta-da unnecessary trailblazing anyway I love this design I really like how it turned out this is on the back of the shirt and because the shirt is large and boxy the design overall looks small um I'm printing this on eight and a half by eleven paper that's the overall size and um then because i used my cricut that limits the the maximum size as well and because i'm printing it to be able to be cut on the cricut it has to have those mark lines for the machine to read which further limits the maximum size that you can print on one sheet so this is what it looks like the maximum size this design can be and I still think the design is really awesome and could be really fun to play with on different um, shirt sizes, different shirt styles, different um, locations and orientations on the shirt. 
there's so many fun things like my kids have already requested the these designs on shirts of their own which like there's no reason we couldn't just like put it on shirts they already have it's just such a fun sort of um handmade repurposing clothing option i'm just super into it i'm so 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 into it and also i love the little the little critters the cute little guys on this shirt they look like the the digimon patomon patamon 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 um i really hope that's what that digimon's name is patamon yeah anyway that was the vibe that that's that's how they feel to me so this shirt overall is like Ouroboros themed. I am really fascinated by the concept. Sometimes it's just a single um, like serpent or a single creature like eating itself, like circling it on its tail. Sometimes I see two snakes um, or two serpents, two shapes, two creatures. This is the extent of my Ouroboros knowledge. You're getting it all right now. But um the concept itself um, has been kind of present in the back of my mind as um, just in the way the world's been lately. It just feels, I'm feeling it, you know? I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that cycle of everything. And so I really like this design. I sketched this one out. Um, and then I duplicated the snakes themselves and just changed up the like individual little accents so that the two sleeves would be unique from one another. And I really like how this one turned out, the brown shirt. I'll put some pictures up because did I, t did I take footage of it? Maybe there might be a random video in here that I took on my phone. Listen, this, this piecemealing together is the most effective way for me to actually make things to to share to have done it and have completed the task so here we are Okay, now shirt number three is something I think, personally, I think is really special. Shirt number three, I kind of took the best of the first two, um, which I really like the design of the first shirt. I like that large, chunky, chaotic, um, going across the entire garment sort of thing. Um, but then combining that with the thinner adhesive um, to see what we can get on a gray shirt and this one was really fun and an interesting new challenge so with this one on the very first shirt I lined out all the pieces ahead of time to make sure I knew where they were all gonna go and where everything was gonna sit and I commended myself I patted myself on the head and said good job because I knew that taking the time to do that was going to help me in the long run to make sure that all my pieces went where I wanted them to go do you think I did that for the second shirt of the same design? The answer is not yes. So no, for this one, I was kind of like, man, I'm throwing this last shirt in this video because I want all three of them to be in the video because I created that imaginary boundary for myself, set that imaginary goal, that, that imaginary standard for myself. And so I had to do all three. But I think the process is really interesting to see. You can kind of see me troubleshooting. You can see me working through it and checking 
what the paper looks like, what the adhesive looks like when it's very first going down and it's more opaque. The colors are overall um, lighter in value and more saturated. Um, but the way they fade into the fabric, especially the lighter adhesive, I find to be so satisfying. And I found that if I do a light press on the adhesive, where it started to kind of melt and soften, but it hasn't yet um, completely adhered to the fabric, like I did on this section, I can still pick it up and move it around if I need to resettle it. So it's just really fun to allow myself to make mistakes because that's how I'm gonna learn how to troubleshoot and problem solve. Um, Cause I've been learning so much that, oh, look at my little buddy's hands. There he is. Uh, my son came up to visit me and I told him he could touch the bunny when it cooled because it was really hot as evidenced by the fact that there seems to be like the imprint of like my ironing board on the design in that one spot. Maybe I left iron in that spot too long or that location just got too much heat, but um, it did go away once the garment cooled, that, that um, difference. You can kind of still see it on the left here. That did go away. So anyway, yeah, my son came out to visit me. I have no idea how I'm going to get back to whatever I was saying before that. But also, I was not very precious about the location where everything went. I just kind of let it drift if it wanted to. I just kind of let it go. And so the design is skewed. It's off-centered compared to the other. And it's interesting. It's interesting in that way. I'm sure I probably have pictures of all three shirts so I'm gonna try to put up for you here at least pictures of all three shirts so that you can see how they're different from one another and uh, I'm proud of them thank you to my partner for helping me and also my son for he was very um, helpful there as well um, my daughter was an excellent um, support. She was there for any moral support that I needed and she very often demanded snuggles during the process so really it was a team effort and we got through this all together. <laughs> anyway, that's been the process of making these three shirts. If you have any questions, let me know. Another piece of information that I thought would be helpful is that I printed these using my Canon Pixma Pro 300. In, no, image graph. Canon keeps changing their printers. Everybody's doing the capitalism and I'm just confused. I'm just out here confused by all this dang, dang, dang here capitalism. The Canon image pro graph uh, pro 300 is the printer I'm using. It uses a pigment based ink, not a dye based ink, which is more common in um, cheaper printers. I do not know if that affects the longevity of the shirt in terms of the color. It'll be a mystery, we'll find out. My cutting machine is the Cricut Explore Air 2. I've had it for several years. Don't really recommend it as it doesn't read glossy papers very well, which makes sticker making difficult. I think that I would recommend a silhouette, like a standard, whatever the standard model silhouette is, um, over this particular Cricut and if I was going to replace this one, which I'd like to, I'll probably get a silhouette instead. Uh, you can see the ways that I worked hard on these shirts, the ways that I did not, and here they are. And I'm proud of myself because now I have three cool shirts that I didn't have before this. That seems like an epic win. So yeah, is that all of the information? 
I think so. The company that makes my iron is not sponsoring this video, even though that logo is very conveniently placed. I do see it. The sensation of moving the iron over the parchment paper is extremely satisfying. Put a little bit of cardstock between the shirt layers to um, protect it from that impression thing. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you to my patrons for your love and support as their names go by here. Um, I love you all very much. I am challenging myself to um, not try to make every new thing the best thing and do this more often. Make more videos. That's my challenge. I feel like I've been saying that exact same thing every video that I've ever made, ever. Anyway, I'm going to go and edit this and post it now, immediately. I love you. I hope you're all doing well. And I will talk to you in the next video. Have a great weekend. Go out and stand in the sun. Um, okay. I love you.